Chair Russell? Here. Commissioner Bowman? Present. Commissioner Woods? Can she hear us? Commissioner Woods? Present. Commissioner Ferry? Commissioner Hollins? Here. Commissioner Oberg? Present. Commissioner Hamilton? You have a quorum. Thank you. Would you uh, all join me in uh, a salute to our nation's flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag to the of the United States of, the of America United States. and to the republic for which it stands, which it stands one nation, one under God, God. indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of the minutes. Uh, consideration of the minutes for uh, approval, uh, consideration for the November uh, 19th, 2020 regular meeting minutes as written with noted uh, corrections. Uh, did everybody have a chance to review the minutes? And if so, were there any corrections or omissions? Yes. Okay. Uh, minutes, approval of minutes, uh, section A, consideration of November 20th minutes, and then down below, it's made approval for November 19th. Shouldn't that be changed from February 20th to the 11 19? Uh, I would think so. February 20th, because it was. Um... See what I mean? Yes. Just as the meeting was on the 19th and it is uh, uh, for the February 20th, consideration of February 20th. So that should be changed. Is there anything else? Any other? That's the only thing I found. Okay. Uh, does that take a motion? Yes. Uh, I'll make the motion that we. Uh, uh, approve the change in the minutes from the 19th to the 20th, or 20th to the 19th. But the month too. Oh, and the. Uh, Isn't it? No, we were in November. We didn't have a December meeting. I'm still confused. Consideration of November meeting. Mm -hmm. And then the motion was made to approve the November meeting. So it should read November 19th on both places, shouldn't exactly, it? Exactly, exactly. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because it says here, uh, uh, where's the other part of that at? Um, <clears throat> well, I'm sorry, I thought to confuse this. So we're approving the minutes from November. So the minutes from November included the approval of the minutes from February because that was the last meeting we had had before we went on hiatus from the pandemic. I see. If that makes sense. Yes. I got you now. So but they, isn't the one yeah. in the italics supposed to be what is considered and then the motion Shouldn't those two dates be the same? No, because we would be approving the minutes from the previous meeting. In our meeting in November, the previous meeting was February. Because we didn't meet for that period of time. Oh, I thought, I thought uh, for this 2021 meeting in January, we are approving the November 19th minutes. We are. Right. But the November 19th minutes included the approval of the February gotcha. 20th okay. gotcha. meeting minutes. Oh, so it is right as yes. written. Yes, I believe it is. Yeah. Okay, I'm gotcha. sorry. I'm sorry. I got so confused. No, it, it took me a minute to catch up. So. <laughs> I apologize. All right, so we'll withdraw that motion. There's uh, nothing There's nothing to There's nothing to no, correct. No correct. Everything is fine. Uh, 
than the minutes stand as uh, printed. Uh, all in favor of accepting the minutes as written, I indicate by saying aye. Well, aye. I, I'm sorry, aye. I think we still we need aye. a separate motion. I'm sorry? I believe we need a separate motion and second without the correction. Without the correction, okay, because we, we didn't have a second on the first one, so that's why I just went past it. Uh, I'll make the motion then that we uh, uh, accept the minutes as written for the uh, uh, 2020 November meeting. I'll second it. All right. Sorry. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Okay. All right. This one. Consider, uh, um, consideration of public comments. Uh, those wishing to uh, address the Clean City Commission need not request <laughs> permission in advance. Action taken as a result of public comments will be limited to directing staff to study the matter and res or reschedule the matter for consideration and uh, discussion at a later time, pursuant to ARS 38-431 ETAL. Uh, no one that, uh, wants to address the commission? Uh, go down to 2A, uh, public comment procedures. There's well, three parts to this. Well, if I could just, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Sir. Go ahead, you wanna do it? That's sure. Uh, so this is the uh, public comment procedures. This is a hybrid meeting with three opportunities for public participation. In person, those wishing to address the commission in person do not need to pre-register. Space is limited and will be allotted, allotted on a first come, first serve basis. Attendance priorities will be given to presenters first and then non-presenters. Uh, the second method is call-ins. Those wishing to address the commission by telephone will need to pre-register by 3 p.m. on January 21st, 2021 by emailing dalderson at cityofcayman.gov and providing their name, address, telephone number. Uh, they will be using email and agenda item they would like to comment on. Once registered, a link with additional instructions will be provided. Only those who have pre-registered will be admitted to the meeting. Um, and no one, no one had registered uh, today to speak at the meeting via call in. Uh, written comments, all written comments must be submitted by 3 p.m. on January 21st, 2021 by emailing dalderson at cityofkingman.gov or dropping off handwritten comments at the Public Works Department main office located at 3700 East Andy Devine. Each speaker will be given three minutes to comment and all comments will be shared with the commission and attached to the minutes for this meeting. Members of the public can watch or listen to the meeting on YouTube at youtube.com, City of Kingman. And again, we, we received no written uh, comments. We received no requests for call-ins to the meeting. And we have no one here in the auditorium tonight to address the public comments. Does anyone have any questions about item A? Okay, we can move along to reports. Welcoming new members, uh, it's my pleasure to welcome and congratulate uh, Rod Oberg and uh, Richard Ham Hamilton, newly appointed Clean City Commissioners and uh, reappointment of Commissioner Hollins and Vice Chair Sarah Ferry. Uh, welcome aboard, good. thank you. Welcome everyone and thank you for uh, utilizing Zoom for our meeting tonight. That's very considerate and helpful. And we thank you very much. Okay, item B, Clean City Commission orientation. Clean City Commission uh, orientation. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, um, uh, for those new members, in, I guess all, along with welcoming uh, Council Member Nelson as our new liaison for the City Council, and I believe she's in attendance tonight, so thank you, ma'am, and welcome to the Clean City Commission. I am here. Ah. Um, 
generally when we have new members, we do a, a Clean City Commission orientation. And there's a lot of information in this presentation. Um, I'll hit the highlights. Uh, some, some of it will be followed up with more in-depth training um, at later meetings. So your Clean City Commission liaison is Public Works Department. Uh, I'm the Public Works Director. Don Alderson is the Public Works uh, Admin Support for the Commission. Uh, she's not here this evening. Um, Ed Tapia over here is a Solid Waste Superintendent. And Glenn Proudfoot is our crew leader in the Solid Waste Department. Uh, just a little background on the Public Works Department. Uh, we have over 95 employees. Uh, we oversee water operations, wastewater, streets, solid waste, public transit, uh, building maintenance, fleet maintenance. Uh, we've recent, we are recently in the process of adding uh, airport operations and maintenance to our lineup, and we have a, a small administrative staff. So the commission uh, consists of seven men members appointed by the council. Uh, no more than two uh, may reside outside the city limits. It serves as an advisory board to the council. It meets at 5.30 on the third Thursday of each month. Uh, commissioners are appointed to, to serve three-year terms. This is our current uh, lineup of uh, commissioners. Uh, uh, Mr. Russell is the chairman. Uh, Commissioner Ferry is the vice chair. We have Commissioner Bowman Woods, our new commissioner, uh, Mr. Oberg, uh, Mr. Hollins, and Mr. Hamilton. So the city code uh, kind of dictates what the purpose of commissions are. Uh, there may be some revisions to some of the uh, verbiage in the city code. A lot of it's pretty uh, antiquated and, uh, and uh, maybe not so applicable anymore. But the Clean Cities uh, mission statement is uh, it's created to uh, for the purpose of assisting the Common Council in establishing a citywide policy for decreasing the amount of loose refuse in the city. Um, again, we meet on the third Thursday of each month at 530. Um, it's your responsibility as a commissioner. If you're not going to be at the meeting, please let us know. Um, you know, there are times we struggle, not so much recently, but in the past there have been times we struggle to get a quorum, and if we're not going to have a quorum, then that's just kind of a waste of everybody's time. So if you're not going to be there, if you could let us know, that would be appreciated. Uh, agenda packets are usually distributed the Thursday before the meeting. As in this meeting, that was delayed, and there were some special uh, circumstances that came up, and sometimes we get a little behind on that. But that's our goal, is to get it out the week before the meeting. It's, it's important as a commissioner, if you can go through that packet prior to the meeting, um, be prepared to discuss or act on any action items you might have in that meeting. Um, so in the new commissioners and our current commissioners uh, saw this with this meeting. Generally, we send out a agenda packets uh, to your email address. This time it included a, a link for Zoom Again, thank you for those of you who took uh, advantage of that. Um, and that's how you'll deliver, that's how your packets will be delivered to you. Um, if you need to contact, if you need to follow up to contact Donna or me, and it's, please do not reply all to an email that went out to the whole commission. Um, technically, that could be a violation of the open meeting law. We'll get into some more of that late, later. But if you want to reach out to, uh, uh, Donna or myself, that's fine, but please don't copy enough people that are on the commission to constitute a quorum because then we're having a meeting outside of this meeting. So that's the whole purpose of that. Um, on the agenda, we have the approval of minutes, the old business, the new business. Um, we have the call to the public, the approval of the minutes, uh, and we have announcements and adjournments. We have reports also. If an, if an item is an action item that requires a motion and a vote by the council we, or by the commission, we usually try to put that in the communication. So reports are mo mostly provided just for informational purposes. But again, the proper etiquette is I make a motion to approve 
dot, 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 that is seconded by somebody, um, then a vote is held on that, on that motion. And I got ahead of myself a little bit here. Uh, the call to the public is set aside for members of the public to address the commission. And they can address the commission about things that are not on the agenda. Um, and that's fine. Um, there cannot be discussion of an item that is not on the agenda. So if somebody comes up here with a whole new topic for us, uh, we can say, you know, or I guess I would recommend that you would refer it to us mm -hmm. to get in touch with that person. And if you were interested in pursuing it, that you would tell us to put it on a future agenda and then we can handle that. Um, but we can't have discussion up here on something that's not on the agenda. Again, that's subverting the open meetings law because we're talking about something that we didn't advertise we were going to be talking about. And there may be people out there who would have attended that meeting if they'd have known that we were going to be talking about that subject. So, and I apologize if I'm sounding, if I'm sounding patronizing or anything, but this is all important stuff. And mm -hmm. this, this is things that, you know, we've been doing this for a long time, but these are still things that we run into without thinking about it. So it's just something, it's a good reminder for all of us, me included. So there are, um, there are recommended responses for a call to the public. So if it's a direct criticism on you, you can respond to that direct criticism, again, not engaging in a dialogue or conversation. You can ask staff to review it. You can ask that it be placed on a future agenda, or you can just listen. Uh, the report section usually contains information, information for the commissioners. Um, these aren't action items. Generally, no votes or voting takes place during this section. If, if we give you a report, and it's something that, again, you want to you wanna further discuss or you want to put you know, on the next agenda as an action item, then we, we will definitely take that direction from you at that meeting. But we, unless we advertise it that it's something that we may vote on, um, we're not going to be voting on it. But you could tell us to put it on the next agenda and make it an action item. The announcement section is strictly for the commissioners to announce uh, request for future uh, agenda items, uh, you know, special events sometimes, you know, we just reminders about special events or, or uh, meetings that you have attended or um, future trainings that you have, uh, you have lined up or that you're interested in. Um, it's just strictly, again, announcements and it's not, it's not a discussion item. And the meetings adjourned by a motion and a vote. Um, and we record the exact time of the adjournment. Uh, and just a reminder, in, with between Zoom and um, the way that we're recording meetings now, it's very important to use your microphone to try to speak clearly. I know it gets tough sometimes with Zoom meetings with people talking over each other, not intentionally, just because they can't hear each other. So it's very important to use your microphone and speak clearly, and uh, now, now so more than ever because we're actually doing minutes by going back and, and watching the videos. So. so this is a little bit more detail on open meeting laws. I, and I'm not gonna go through all of this because we'll have a future agenda item uh, maybe next month that uh, we'll bring in an expert to take us through the open meeting law uh, <laughs> canon. <laughs> But I mean, the main point is that any meeting of a public body has to be in public. Um, the public has, its business ne needs to be conducted in public. Um, you know, we can't be at some special event where there's four of us and we all decide, okay, we're gonna do this. Well, that, that discussion needs to take place in this room and on Zoom, I guess now, but um, that's the overriding philosophy behind the open meeting laws that you know, we're talking about the public's business and that needs to take place in public where we're advertising that meeting, we're posting the agenda, they know what we're gonna be talking about, they have the opportunity to attend. Uh, quorums, again, with uh, 
seven members, uh, we would need uh, four members to constitute uh, a quorum. We cannot, generally we're not going to meet without a quorum. We can't take any action. Email, this is just a, um, a reminder and um, just the, the reply all or even just the, you know, if, if, if Mr. Howland emails Mr. Russell and ask him, what do you think about this? And then Mr. Russell um, emails Commissioner Bowman and ask her, and then we're asking Mr. Oberg. We've created uh, a straw meeting there. We've, we've got four of you that are talking about something outside of a meeting, even though it might not be directly. Um, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I probably sound really, uh, <laughs> really mean right now. <laughs> so the other big item is a, a conflict of interest. Um, we haven't had that so much on this commission. Other commissions are more prone to it, um, but if you have any doubts that there may be a conflict of interest with an item on the agenda, you know, let us know before the meeting. You know, we can consult with the city attorney. We can find out exactly what your relationship is to whatever's on the agenda. You know, generally, if there's any direct financial uh, ben potential benefit to you, then you shouldn't be voting on it. And if you're not gonna vote on it, you really should get down off the dais and leave the room during the discussion. Uh, and you shouldn't be a part of that discussion. But you know, that doesn't happen too often here. It's maybe some other commissions might be more likely. But if you're not sure, let us know. Um, and we can, you know, because I'm sure if it's in the back of your mind that maybe I shouldn't be doing this, well, let's find out for sure. Maybe it's not a problem at all, but maybe it is. And then the, the problem with conflict of interest again is that, again, it, it dissolves that public trust. You know, if, if a conflict of interest were to come to light, you know, that's, that's, that's the same old boys doing the same old thing. You know, that's, that's, you know, that's not what we're, that's not what we're trying to do as a city. All right, so with all that lecturing, I will open it up to any questions, if anybody has any questions. Again, there will be a lot more detailed uh, information to follow at, uh, at uh, other meetings, uh, sp specifically on the open meeting walls. I got a question. Yes, sir. On the uh, purpose, uh, it it sort of leads us to the, the can see that, that the Clean City Commission is only dealing with loose refuge that flies around the city. Uh, aren't we involved with, with the almost beautification? In other words, we see buildings that are uh, getting overrun with, with weeds and, and uh, uh, trash that's piled out in their yards or something. Uh, shouldn't we be focused on, on reporting well, that to the uh, uh, neighborhood services or, or someone? Well, you know, as, as a citizen or a, a resident of the area, you know, you definitely have a right to report any public nuisances you see. I guess the one thing I would caution would be um, you're, you're on the Clean City Commission. I wouldn't be out I'm, I wouldn't be out in the public representing myself as a code enforcement person for the city of Kingman. Right. You know, you're not you're not employees of the city of Kingman. Uh, you know, our employees need to be need to work within our chain of, chain mm -hmm. of command and be accountable for their actions. Um, but yeah, you are definitely within your rights to report any public nuisances you see to development services. But we are not a code enforcement organization. We are here to, to talk about. Uh, we're here to talk about policy. Okay. And, and, and the other thing we branched out into is, you know, special projects. You know, we do our cleanups. We do those things. You know, we're not here to, and I'm really going to sound bad, but we're not here to, to tell Rob how to run the public works department. You know, you're not the administrative and, and or you're not the operations and maintenance uh, supervisors over the right. public works department. And, and I don't mean that. You know, with any I, with any disrespect, I guess just, what I was what I was looking for is is uh, uh, trying to get more teeth into the code enforcement department, and 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 we really don't have any 
uh, leverage there whatsoever, apparently. Well, I mean, you know, our, our city ordinance is based upon uh, state enabling statutes um, mm -hmm. and what the state says we can do. And as far as property management or private property rights, you know, Arizona is a very conservative state when it comes to private property rights. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I think that over the years, you know, we've had some pretty good initiatives through development services or wherever the code enforcement function, you know, resided at that time. Um, but, you know, as a, as a child of the state, you know, I mean, the, the cities are children of the state. They govern what we can and can't do. Um, and we have to follow those guidelines. And that's what we follow as far as, you know, a property ha owner has so long to respond to a notice and procedures on those. But I think there are ongoing efforts to, you know, to streamline those procedures as best we can while still protecting yeah. the homeowner or the property owner's rights. So. I, I got, <clears throat> I was looking for that very same thing on, and there is a section and I couldn't find it on my phone, but uh, the, about the commission and the responsibilities, there, there's more to it than that statement. There's, it, there's stuff that covers uh, the uh, recycle and a whole bunch of other stuff, but I'll have to find it again mm -hmm. on something bigger than I can see on my telephone right here. But there is a whole list of responsibilities that the commission is, is for, not just that statement right there. Okay. I'm yeah, I, I did. Because I, I, I didn't. I've talked with a lot of people. Uh, uh, Chris Young from the fire department, and um, uh, who's in charge of the redebatement, to see you know whether they go out and comb the neighborhoods and and, and uh, talk to the people about when they're when their weeds are up so high that it's catching trash and and uh, uh, holding it in the yards. But uh, and and the other thing that I wanted to mention on, on the uh, uh, quorum. Uh, is it advisable when we're out and uh, say like chilling on veal uh, and uh, four of us get together and start talking, could that be construed as perhaps carrying a, a business and, and or should one of us say, hey, this we, we got to leave so that we're not uh, uh, constituting a quorum of, of well, I, I think if you know that's going to be the case, you should let us know and we can work with the clerk's office. I know that there are, I, I believe in the past that when we've had big special events, whether it's, you know, Andy Devan days or something, that yeah. there, there are general notices that, gonna, that can be posted and I believe have been posted in the past that said, you know, we, that there may, there may be a quorum of, you know, this body or that body mm -hmm. at this event. So if, I know it comes if it's up going every, to happen, I think every we just time we have know. open meetings, uh, uh, laws uh, uh, reviewed, that that subject comes up because uh, we get together all the time on various social sub, uh, functions. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, when there's more than three of us together shooting the breeze, uh, I wondered if, if it isn't a good idea if one of us excuses ourselves and yeah. just so it doesn't give the indication that who knows we might be talking about something. Uh, so. That's about all I had for right now. I, th I think as long as, you know, like we have the, the uh, first, <coughs> first Friday and stuff out here, mm -hmm. if we all happen to, to meet out there and just because we're there, we can still, we can talk and say hi, but you can't talk business. We, we can yeah, talk well, about everything else, but you know, what we did last week or something like that, but but it could be we, someone sees four commissioners talking together. They, you it, know, it's there's that possible, yeah. but it yeah. wouldn't yeah. be. Well, and you wouldn't be violating anything if you wasn't talking. Well, it, it might it would appear, appear appearances. There right. you go. Well, perceptions are important sometimes. Right. Anything further? Any more yeah. questions? We'll move on then to item C: solid waste survey results. Solid waste survey uh, that was conducted in a conjunction with solid waste study was completed December 18th. The results uh, were compiled and presented to the Keene City Commission uh, January 25th, or to the City Council rather, January 25th, 2021. 
I, I guess I didn't think to ask our Zoom attendees if they can see my screen okay. I see it fine. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, I can see it fine. Yeah, it's fine. All right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, um, as part of these, well, what's currently underway is a solid waste rate study. Um, rates for solid waste, formerly known as sanitation, haven't increased since 2007. We've found ourselves in a bad spot where we're having a very difficult time trying to uh, keep up with our truck replacement. You know, obviously that's the one of the biggest expenses um, outside of landfill tipping fees is uh, our truck replacement. Generally, they go anywhere between three and four hundred thousand dollars each. Um, so currently, we're spending a lot more money trying to maintain the old fleet than we would be if we were if we had newer vehicles in the system. So we gave a presentation to the city council, kind of outlining the. Uh, uh, recommended uh, rate structure, and we'll get into that a little bit further in the presentation. And uh, City Council told us you need to come up with a way to get some public input. So typically non-pandemic times, we would hold a couple open houses, post, uh, you know, advertise those, have them in here, and uh, maybe we'd get one or two people show up. So, you know, we weren't going to do that with the pandemic. We weren't going to have any open houses. So we came up with the idea of uh, doing a, a survey, both kind of old school and new school. Um, we used a, a paper survey was sent out in all of our water bills. Well, all of our, all of our water bills that are also sanitation or solid waste customers. Um, but then we also utilized uh, Survey Monkey to put the to put the survey online. So I'm just going to go through the results of that a little bit with you here this evening. Uh, so the survey was conducted from November 9th to December 18th. Uh, we have right now 11,847 solid waste residential customers. We, re we received uh, 1,966 responses, which kind of blew me away. I did not think we'd get anywhere near that amount. Uh, the other thing that surprised me was that the paper responses were a lot more popular than the survey monkey responses. We got 1,300 paper uh, responses and 654 on survey monkey. So this turned into quite the project uh, between finance and public works, and and uh, I, I'll say this was my uh, my Tom Sawyer painting the white picket fence project. That anybody that came in my office left with 100 surveys to tally. So. Everybody, everybody out there was compiling survey results. So this is question number one, and I, it's, it's kind of redundant here, but I know some people see pictures better and some people see numbers better, so I did, I did a slide for each. So question number one was, do you reside within the limits of the city of Kingman? Uh, the response was overwhelmingly yes, um, and that was over 96% of the folks said yes. And just a little bit over, or a little bit under 4% said no. Uh, question two, the City of Kingman currently provides twice, twice a week trash collection to its residential customers. How would you rate your overall service? Uh, and very satisfied, and that's always good to see. That's, uh, that's, that's a pretty, that makes me proud. But uh, mm -hmm. overwhelmingly very satisfied. Uh, Almost at 90% of our responses said they were very satisfied with their current trash service. Um, question number three. Uh, recently, the city of Kingman eliminated its drop-off recycling program due to cost. When the program was in place, how frequently did you use it? Uh, the number one response was never, but the number two response was weekly. And here's the detailed breakdown on that. So. Uh, Never was a, almost a 28%, um, and then weekly was at 26, monthly at 24, and rarely at 22. Uh, question number four, if the city were to reduce its current level of service to once per week collection, how concerned would you be with the following? So this deals with three different categories, and I guess just the background on the once a week. Um, once a week, sir, well, the Arizona Administrative Code requires that uh, 
the utilities or well, utilities or municipalities provide twice a week trash pickup. There is a waiver procedure for that. It would require the approval of Mojave County and the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality. Um, some of the neighboring communities in Bullhead and Havasu um, went and got that waiver when they when they were running their curbside recycling program. Now, I don't believe the Bullhead's running a curbside recycling program anymore, mm -hmm. but they they still pick up trash once a week. So the first question was, if we went to once a week, would you be concerned with uh, odors and smells? Uh, the number one response was very concerned um, at 45%. Uh, would you be concerned with rodents and pests? Again, the number one response was very concerned at almost 42%. Would you be concerned about the accumulation of trash? Very concerned at almost, well, just over 51%. So this is where we get into the rate structure. So we currently uh, have a fee of 19.78 per month for twice a week trash. It's been that way since 2007. Um, so we came up with some options. Uh, option number one would be to maintain the current level of service of twice a week per twice per week trash collection with an average five-year increase of the rate of one dollar and 29 cents a month to 2107 option two would be main maintain the current level of service of twice per week trash with a drop-off recycling program uh, with an average five-year increase of three dollars and eleven cents to 22.89. Option three would be reduce the current level of service to once per week trash uh, with an average five year decrease of $4.56 per month to a monthly fee of $15.22. Option four is to reduce the current level of service to once per week collection, trash collection with a drop off recycling program at an average five-year decrease of approximately $2.74 a month to $17.04. So the uh, winner by a pretty good margin was to maintain the current level of service option one. And there's the breakdown. So 25% for option one and all the other options uh, anywhere between 11 and 12%. This was a follow-up question to that. Um, some places where they have once a week trash pickup, they will let you have a second can for a certain rate so that you know your, your trash is still only getting picked up once a, once a week, but you can roll two cans out. So we asked people if they would be interested in that if they, went to, if they supported one of those once a week uh, options. And the answer from most folks was no. Um, so that's well, over 37% of folks said no. And of course, it depends part, most of those people said, well, it depends how much. And that wasn't included in the rate study. I guess we asked that question to see if there was a big demand for that. Then we would go back and figure out, you know, what that cost would need to be to pay for that service. Mm -hmm. So that's the results of our survey. Um, where we stand right now, our next steps, uh, we'll be going to the Municipal Utilities Commission next week to give them this presentation, plus the presentation that we've updated from council um, several months ago uh, with the, and asked them for a recommendation on uh, what to do with our solid waste rates. Uh, if they move forward with that, then we would proceed with a, a council meeting and I don't have the calendar in front of me, but I wanted, I think, I believe that it, that would be held in April sometime where we would get the council's uh, council decision on what they wanted to do with solid waste rates. Um, at which time we'd have to follow the state statute as far as raising rates. There are certain requirements on how long you, know, you have to issue a notice of intent uh, that has to be posted. And we'd probably have another public hearing on that. 
So there's a whole timeline that's spelled out in state statutes. And I apologize, I don't have all, all that broken down or, or retained in my head. So we would be looking at sometime uh, late spring um, or, well, if we were going to institute new rates, uh, it, it might make more sense just to, to establish those in July with the new fiscal year. So that, that timing hasn't exactly been finalized yet. So I can try to answer any questions anybody might have. Well, option one did not include drop-off recycling. It was just trash pickup. Yes, sir. Has there been any kind of a, a figure on, on how long uh, they can maintain this service at the, cost, at the present uh, rate, uh, price rate? In other words, will it soon get to the point where they can no longer function uh, at the rate that they're charging right now and still maintain the equipment and, and keep a proper solid waste program going? Yeah, I, I think we came to that determination over a year ago when we started this process. There's no, there are days that we don't have enough trucks for drivers. Um, and we are overwhelming our fleet maintenance uh, facility. Between, between solid waste and the fire department, our fleet maintenance facility is, is working very hard. And just the, and you know, these, these, Refuse trucks are probably some of the most high maintenance vehicles you're ever going to see. I mean, they're just, they're full of, of hydraulics and um, mm -hmm. they take a beating and um, they just require a lot of maintenance. And when we have them in the shop, those are generally expensive repairs. Mm -hmm. You know, those, some of those are things that, that we can't do in our shop. We don't have, uh, you know, mechanics with those qualifications or the equipment that we would need to do some of that mm -hmm. work. So, um, you know, it, it's unsustainable right now. Um, and, you know, I, I tip my hat to, to Ed and all of his crew and, and our fleet maintenance crew because uh, it's, it's really a yeoman's work trying to keep that fleet running and trying to meet, you know, especially trying to meet this, this kind of high standard that I think Ed has set for solid waste, you know, customer service, um, when we don't have enough vehicles, or we don't have no. enough run, we got plenty of vehicles, we don't have enough vehicles that run um, to, to pick up trash. So it's, yeah, something, something's going to have to happen. So with, with, the, with the amount of new housing startups, uh, residential, and, and with the airport and the business, everything commercial, uh, in the not too distant future, we're gonna have to raise in order to maintain the service, from what I can see. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. That would take a vote uh, on a ballot in order to do that, or? Oh, I believe it would just be a council action governed okay. by a state yeah. statute. Okay. Anything else? Okay. So we go to item four, old business. Um, Revised 2020-2021 event calendar, uh, further discussion and possible action regarding Clean City Commission activities in 2021. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members yes. of the commission, you know, the pandemic pretty much ruined our, our event calendar last year. And I'm not sure what's coming back when. So I was thinking about just leaving this item on the agenda and you know, as as you're out in the community, if you you know, if you hear that first Fridays are starting back up, or you know, I guess we'd all hear that. But you know, if you hear of other events, you know, that we participated in the past, you mm -hmm. know, the Arbor Days, the uh, you know, some of the other events that we've we participated in and tried to support. Um, you know, if we can, if, I'm thinking if we just leave this on as a running item, and then. You know, you can let us know if there's something we haven't heard of. We can contact those folks. You know, and we can put it on the agenda to see if it's something that you would want to participate in beforehand. It's just that timing is. You know, we'd have to know about it a couple months in advance so we could get it on an agenda to say, okay, we're going to participate and this is what we're going to do, and uh, just have it on there as we see what events start coming back. You know, hopefully. 
and hopefully this spring, you know, maybe some things start happening again, you know, and, and uh, I mean, that's what I always enjoyed about this commission. It was one of the most active commissions as far as being out in the community and uh, trying to educate folks and uh, trying to raise awareness of things. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not quite the same as it, as it used no. to be. So, uh, <laughs> so we'll just make it kind of a month to month uh, and see what happens with this. Uh, yeah. Uh, if the vaccine starts working and the numbers start going down, maybe activities will start up again and we can yeah. We can start doing and, you know, maybe And also just, I guess, consider new events that we haven't partic yeah. you know, that we haven't participated in the past, but maybe something new or different. You know, we can, as long as we know about it a couple months in advance, we can get it on an agenda and talk mm -hmm. about it and, you know, reach out to those folks and see what we could help them with or, or what they may yeah. need and just keep it on It would it be nice there. if we could still keep our Arbor Day or something like that. We wouldn't, you yeah. know, we could outdoors and we can uh, socially distance ourselves and whatnot but yeah. I think that's a real good uh, program to keep in, in mind so I mean as of right now I'm not aware of anything being scheduled yet but okay. I, I just thought we'd keep it on and as you know like I say as you hear about it let us know we'll get it on an agenda and uh, you know we'll reach out to that organization and see what we can help them with do you need a motion I, I would just continue this item. Yeah. Right okay. Yeah. Just, well, a motion to c continue or table. I can't remember the difference between table and continue. Okay. Good. Item B. Well, I'm sorry. Could we oh. get a motion just to continue this item, and then I'll just keep it on the agenda going yeah. forward. Yeah. Uh, item B. Well, service to the community program. Update discussion and possible action regarding the service uh, to the community uh, program that was discussed at the November 19th, 2020 regular meeting. Uh, Mr. Chairman, could we go back to the previous item and, and just make a motion in a second and hold a vote to continue, to continue? Oh, we the really calendar? That's what I was asking. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If we, can if we could, yeah. please. I make a motion that, that we uh, put the calendar, the Clean City Commission calendar, on next month's agenda. Okay. Motion's been made that we keep the Clean City Commission cal calendar on next month's agenda. Do I have a second? I'll second. The motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Okay, now we can go to item B. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members yeah. of the commission, uh, this is something we've talked about. Uh, if we just brought it up for the first time at the November meeting, or maybe. But this was actually a, uh, a recommendation from uh, C. Manager Foggin. Um, there was a previous uh, place that he had worked where uh, the city had a program like this. It was a uh, community assistance type of program to where if folks were having difficulty keeping their their yard in order or with uh, accumulation of trash or weeds um, that you know, I guess the concept is that uh, you know, public works department would would buy a trailer of some sort and outfit it with uh, you know garden tools yard tools um, any any personal protective equipment we would need and then work with the commission and other service organizations to you know, contact those folks. Um, yeah, I, I still need to work on my end as far as coming up with some kind of waiver form that they would give us. You know, Generally, we're not going on private property, but if we can come up with a waiver form that makes everybody happy to, to where that homeowner said, yeah, you can come on my property and help me clean this up. Um, and then we, we try to do one of those cleanups uh, quarterly to start with and see you know how that worked uh, so I know uh, Donna and her staff have been kind of been compiling uh, some information about uh, service organizations in town some contact info for some of those groups uh, you know we've kind of identified that uh, you know some of the larger employers you know the hospital or Unisource um, you know I, I know that several years ago I worked on a project with uh, 
a Unisource service crew like that where we assembled all the playground equipment over at Palo Christi when they got all that equipment. But, um, and then I got a call out of the blue from uh, Newcore Steel and they're looking for opportunities to partner with the city on uh, beautification projects. Um, so, you know, I, I reached back to them and, and they're very interested in pursuing something like this. I think we, between the service groups and maybe some of these larger employers, um, you know, we could help put together, you know, the equipment we need and like say the personal protective equipment and the, whatever tooling we may need. And, you know, I think we could work with churches as far as, you know, or other, you know, other organizations to let us know people who may need assistance, you know. I think we've got our development services department and they're working to try, try to clean up some of these residential lots. And, you know, maybe they run into, um, you know, somebody who just doesn't have the means or the physical ability to, to do this work on their yard. So I think we could have referrals coming from several different places and, I think we could organize, you know, uh, 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 quarterly cleanups to start with and see see how much uh, traction we get. But I think it's something that you know we're, you know, we're willing to take the lead on. I guess I would ask the commission members to, you know, I mean, you have a lot of contacts out in the community that I don't have, um, and you know, as you. And again, I know we're not having as many special events and maybe intermingling as much as we used to, but I know you still run into people and you know, maybe that's something you can uh, bounce off some of these representatives from other groups of, uh, you know, try to gauge their interest in it. And, you know, if they are, you know, you can have them give me a call and we'll start, we'll start getting the ball rolling, you know, I think, um, I don't know, I think, it, I think it could be really, a really great program. And it, again, you know, it, it, the good thing about that is it, it would give the commission, it gives, well, you know, our staff and the commission something concrete and tangible that, you know, we're having some impact out there, you yeah. know, and uh, so, yeah, I, I think it'd be a good focus for the commission going forward, and, and I think I'll keep this on the agenda, just hopefully every month I'll have a little bit more information or maybe some other people that, you know, have contacted me or that I've been able to contact to, to get that out, but, uh, you know, I know that several of you uh, belong to, you know, many different service organizations or community organizations, and yeah, if, if you can get that word out for us, that, that would be appreciated. I know the uh, Rotary, Kingman 65th Rotary, we clean up the uh, Metcalf Park mm -hmm. every month and stuff like that, but, that, but that's a, uh, city property. Uh, I'm not too familiar with the city, but the county, at one time we had a, the environmental health guy came in and he was gung-ho. So I got with him about taking care of properties that the people didn't have money or the means or the ability to clean up their properties. And he would go out and check them out and make sure they were not a lot of needles and dangerous things for us, the volunteers, to get involved with. And if it was okay, then we would get together and somebody from the county and, and the, my organization would go out and clean it up. So, and I'm sure that would be something that should be done here in the city, you know, check out, you know, we get, we get a lead on it, check it out, make sure it's safe and legal to do it and, and won't in, hurt anybody's health by by helping them out and then schedule a thing and I think that's fantastic. I know myself, again, I'm working in Butler here the last, I've made two trips in, in the Butler to a property that, I mean, they had the streets and stuff piled out on the street. You couldn't even see the house and I hauled off two loads from there and I paid for the dump fee for that and all the labor and gas to come in and get it and stuff. So just barely outside of the city, but I'm sure there's places in the city that we can mm -hmm. do well. And, and again, like say, I'm, I volunteer my trailer and I can get at least one more, so if not two, so mm -hmm. if if we need it, we're, we're, we're ready to do it. I think it's great. I think it's a great idea and I make a motion that we put it on next month's calendar for 
further discussion? Motion's been made that we continue this uh, on, the, on our agenda for next month. Do I hear a second? Oh, I have a second. Motion's been made and second. Any further discussion? If not, those all in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 <laughs> Any opposed before I gavel it down? <laughs> Motion carried. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was really a good idea. Uh, okay. Um, uh, certificate of, of Appreciation Program. Uh, discussion and possible action regarding Certificate of Appreciation Program. That's something that I was talking about uh, a couple of months ago uh, that we used to do. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know how, if it was appreciated or not, but, but I think uh, it shows that at least someone appreciates work that uh, people do to make the city look a little bit nicer, especially in the uh, uh, commercial uh, end of it that is actually seen by the uh, Tourists that come through town here. And I didn't know if we could continue that or not. Well, I think, um, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, um, at the last meeting in November, um, let's see, uh, the commission made a motion to publicize the Certificate of Appreciation Program. Um, that the nomination, so that there was a motion and a vote on that last month. Yeah. Um, the nomination applica application um, has not been posted, but we will get that on Facebook. I and saw in our packet that we had a, a, a an application form here. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's been finalized. So I think the only thing that we would need a motion for would be the approval process. And um, I, I think the, the way I'm envisioning is the application would be submitted to Public Works Department and we would schedule it for an upcoming commission meeting mm -hmm. um, and and that would be uh, the commission would d decide whether or not to award that certificate of appreciation. Yeah, and, and it wasn't that we get the word out to it, even, even uh, uh, members of the public can submit uh, their nominations for something oh like yeah it, it would be submitted to to staff yeah and then yeah we would process it through the through the regular commission mm -hmm. agenda meeting so um if, if you'd like to make a motion to that effect that uh just the approval process would be that the applications would be submitted to the public works department which would schedule them for commission consideration in the future uh so moved do I hear a second? I'll second it. All those in favor of uh, uh, the motion to, uh, how do I put this? The, the uh, application process. Uh, first off, I guess I should ask if there's any further discussion on this. If not, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? Motion carried. Okay, new business, item A, election of officers, discussion and possible action to uh, elect, re-elect uh, the 2021 Clean City Commission uh, chairperson and vice chairperson. I've been doing this now for over three years, I think. <laughs> Maybe it's time. <laughs> you do a good job. Yeah. I like I know uh, uh, Vice Chair Ferry uh, indicated that she would be interested in the position. Uh, well, I think that we could, if you, if the commission so desired, we could. Uh, you want to carry this over? We could push this to next meeting and let the Chairman Russell continue in his seat, and then if Commissioner Ferry's here, then I guess we would know if she. We're interested in being chairperson or not, or you could you could go ahead and uh, approve someone for chair right now. 
we can we can make a motion that, that we carry this uh, item over to to next month and um, uh, when we may have more people in, in uh, attendance I, th I think we ought to not have the same person have have to be the chairman for three well, years yeah, plus I, in a row <laughs> Some, somebody else ought to step up and well, I, you know, I, and I, I would be willing to do that I, also. So <laughs> I don't mind doing it, weird. but I think like you say, it, it, it gives another person the chance to, if they've never done something like this before, to, to do it. And uh, it's, you, you learned a little bit about Robert's mm -hmm. rules of order, but uh, uh, yeah, it's... I, I think if we're willing to be on the commission, we ought to be willing to sit where you're sitting at mm -hmm. least once. Mm -hmm. And if we go by seniority, uh, <laughs> Commissioner Bowman is top, and Commissioner uh, Hollins is, is uh, right there. So, uh, yeah, you can. Well, if, if they're like me, not having did anything like this, take take me a little while to figure out what's going on and and, and stuff. So, you now I think I've been here long enough. I, I could, could handle that. So. Uh, I made a motion that we carry this this item over till next month when there's more people, uh, possibly more people in attendance. Uh, do I hear a second? I make a motion that we affirm the items as far as the rest of the property is to be dedicated. Chair, <laughs> Chair Russell made that motion. If you want to second his I'll motion. Second. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> motion has been made and seconded that we carry this uh, item on the agenda over oh, to the I'm next sorry, month. I'm sorry to interrupt. Commissioner Oberg, did you want, wish to say something? Just back up one thing. So, my understanding is that Mr. Holland is, is willing to step up as chairperson, and then uh, also uh, vice chair is willing to uh, step up as position also. I don't hear him. I couldn't understand. I don't understand. What did say? Commissioner Oberg, they're having a difficult time hearing you. Maybe turn your volume back up a little bit. Did Mr. Holler say he showed interest in being chairperson and also uh, the vice chair is showing interest to take that position? He's asking if, if you're interested. Yes, I would be interested. Yes, sir. And then, the, and then our uh, Mr. Russell said that the vice chair is also interested. Yes. Yes. He's asking me if I'd be interested in the vice chair. No, oh. I think he's uh, uh, vice chair Ferry had expressed interest uh, last year in the chairmanship. Um, I can withdraw my my motion, and and we can make a motion to. Uh, uh, Appoint Commissioner Ferry as chairman and Commissioner uh, Hollins as vice chair. Well, I think Mr. Oberg was just asking the question because I, I don't know that he had, he had heard clearly what the discussion up here. So, yes, I, I'd like to carry it over till next meeting. Ah, I'm just ah. I'm just curious who was interested at this point in time. I think that would take a vote anyway, wouldn't it? Okay. Well, so there's a, there's a motion on the floor to. Carry it over to carry next over the, the item on, on the agenda for next month. I don't think that's been seconded. It yet. was seconded, yes, okay. by Commissioner Bowman. So that's that's what's on the floor. And the we moment. went into further discussion. And uh, uh, if there's no more further discussion, we can take a vote. All those in favor of, of extending this uh, to next month indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Aye. I have a question. <laughs> Yes, okay. So I cannot hear what Commissioner Bowman and C are talking it's about the, the motion now? that was made and what Kathy's saying. I don't know if her, mac, her, if her mic's not on or uh, if it's just not loud enough. I've got my laptop volume increased. I'm just not following what's happening down there. And I don't know who all is here today. 
Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay. I'll try your mic. How many commissioners are here today? There's, there's five commissioners present. Uh, Commissioner Hamilton and Commissioner Ferry are not present. Okay, that's who I was trying to, to determine. I knew um, Commissioner Ferry was not here, but I wasn't sure if our other new commissioner was here. Yeah. So the, the motion on the floor is to table this to next month uh, with the idea that we'd have more commissioners present, and that was seconded by Commissioner Bowman. And we did get and so, we And did we get also a... had two people that are interested for the chairman, being Commissioner Ferry and Hollis. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Okay, I think I'm up to speed now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think we got a vote on this. Actually, it uh, I, I got five yeses on this, uh, yep. so it's the motion's carried. Announcements by commissioners. Uh, limited to announcements, uh, availability, attendance at conferences and seminars, requests for agenda items for further meetings. Commissioner Hollins. Could we get composting again put on the agenda? I know we had a uncomposting event, but uh, if we could discuss composting next month would be, I would be interested in seeing what's okay. going on. Yes, sir. Is that it? Commissioner Woods, do you have anything? Nothing today, sir. Thank you. Commissioner, and I'll have to <laughs> go back on the name here, uh, Oberg. Nothing today, thank you. And I will try and remember your name next month. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Commissioner Bowman. I have nothing. And I don't have anything this month. Uh, does uh, Council Liaison Nelson have anything? Okay. All right, then we'll go to item seven which is adjournment. So I hear a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn this meeting. I'll second it. Motion has been made to adjourn. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. And I'd like to thank our commission.